You can't handle the truth! Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. And today, after a little subscriber inspiration, I've decided to use some more movie lines as they relate to your success. So let's start with, you can't handle the truth! You know, a lot of times, things aren't going as well as we'd like them to go, and what happens is, we as individuals tend to assume when we get verbally attacked, the same posture that we would assume if we were getting physically attacked, which is a defensive posture. And instead of listening to constructive criticism, what we tend to do is go into full excuse mode, I couldn't do it because of this, or I couldn't do it because of that. Handle the truth, work with the truth, and make it a stepping stone to a further achievement. Another line, what we've got here is a failure to communicate. Now that comes from Cool Hand Luke. That's a movie where Paul Newman plays someone that's incarcerated uh, on a farm and he continually tries to escape and every time he escapes they punish him, they punish him, they punish him and the, the most famous line from the movie is where the warden gathers everybody together and they have Paul Newman and he's just beaten up, the guards have beaten him and he's just lying there and the warden looks at him, looks at everybody and says what we have here is a failure to communicate. Communication is so key, so critical. When you're giving instructions to folks, always have them regurgitate back to you what it is you want to have done because then there'll be a clear understanding. It's sort of, you know, expect to inspect, inspect to expect. If they don't know what you expect, how do you expect the job to be done? And you would be shocked how many times that is a key problem, a key issue with people in the workplace is because, oh, I thought you meant this. So let's not have a failure to communicate. The stuff that dreams are made of. Now that comes from the Maltese Falcon. And for those of you that never watch a black and white movie, it's a Humphrey Bogart movie, great movie, strongly recommend that you watch it. It's got Sidney Greenstreet, Humphrey Bogart, uh, Peter Lorre, it's tremendous acting, tremendous lines in it, and at the very end they find out that, well I don't want to give you a spoiler alert, but the point is at the very end the police ask Humphrey Bogart, who is on the side of the police in this particular case, you know, what was it that they were after? And it's the Maltese Falcon, supposedly a jewel encrusted bird from the Renaissance era that's very, very valuable. And he looks at the police and he says, it's the stuff that dreams are made of. And Sidney Greenstreet and Peter Lorre and the other people, they go after this thing. They're willing to do anything to get it. When you have a dream, when it's the stuff that dreams are made of, you will go after it. But you have to have the dream first. So it works positively and negatively. When you have the dream and you get your focus on it, you do what it takes to get the job done, but the first thing you must do is you must have a dream. That'll add excitement to your life, that'll add purpose to your life, that will add an identity to your life. These things are essential if you want to be successful in any endeavor. Round up the usual suspects. Line from Casablanca. Uh, at the end, Humphrey Bogart shoots the, the heavy right in front of the policeman, police lieutenant, and they're supposedly friends, a guy named Louie, and he looks at him and as the police come, and he's wondering, like, uh-oh, here it goes, I shot the guy, I'm cooked. The lieutenant says, round up the usual suspects, which is to say, nothing's going to get happen, nothing's going to be happening here. We're going to just do the same old, same old, same old, same old, and we're going to keep the status quo. In this case, for Humphrey Bogart, it's a good thing. But in your particular case, is it a good thing? Do you want to round up the usual suspects? Or do you want to go out and look for something extraordinary? I'll be back. Well, we know about that one. The Terminator, of, co of course. That's Arnold talking in The Terminator. And key point about I'll be back is that it shows a commitment 
to a purpose. You know, he's looking for a particular person. The person's in a meeting, can't come out. Don't worry, I'll be back. I'm not giving up. I'm not going to let a small barrier prevent me from achieving my goal. So make sure that, and a lot of times, you know, courage is merely another word for persistence. Make sure that you come back the next day. If you had a failure this day, learn from it, have a new starting line, and come back. Today, 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 I consider myself, self, self, the luckiest man, man, man on the face of the earth, 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 earth. That's from the Pride of the Yankees, the Lou Gehrig story. Now, Lou Gehrig was a great baseball player, was honored by the New York Yankees when it was found out that he had a disease which, by the way, bears his name right now. Uh, and it's a, it's a disease that's terminal. So he knew he was dying, and so he was on the field and gave the speech, and the microphone, of course, echoes what he was saying. And here's the point. He realized that he was the luckiest man in the world because he had lived a full life. He had done exactly what his dream was, exactly what his goals were, exactly what his ambitions were. Are you going to be able to say at the end of your days, I'm the luckiest man, 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 man of the wor in the world, 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 world. Think about it. Don't leave anything on the table. Don't leave anything on the field. Make sure that you get all of your at-bats. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. That's, of course, Michael Corleone from The Godfather, wanting to get out of the rackets, wanting to go legitimate. But every time he tries to go out, they pull him back in. Think about this in terms with the people that you associate with. You have great expectations. You have a purpose. You have a particular ambition, a noble ambition, a magnificent obsession that you're seeking. But every time you try and dedicate more time to that, you get pulled back in to the day-to-day -day stuff that happens to all of us. One of the things that you have to learn is to say no. You have to sometimes be selfish in the pursuit of your particular goal, of your magnificent obsession. Don't let them pull you back in to mediocrity. I'm just one stomach flew away from my goal weight. And that's from the Devil Wears Prada. You know, a lot of times when people achieve something, they achieve it because they had a major disappointment in a particular endeavor. You got fired from a job. Oh, I have to go find another job. They find a job and then when they get to that position, that was the dream position. That was where they should have been all the time. So keep in mind that the universe works in mysterious ways and there's always a positive seed that comes from a negative experience. But be careful to, you know, not feel so sorry for yourself, but to move forward and to say, I'm going to make a positive out of this negative. As if, that's from the movie Clueless. One of the things that you have to do when you're envisioning your terrific, your magnificent obsession is to see it as if it's already been achieved. Because when you feel like it's already been achieved, when you have that belief, that's the vibe that you send into the universe. And if you want the universe to be your partner, send the vibe that you want the universe to respond to. Don't send the one where you're frustrated. Don't send the one where you've tried this and it failed. Send the final outcome. And then when you send that correct vibe to the universe, the universe will respond in kind. You make me want to become a better man. And that's from the movie As Good As It Gets. You know, it's often said in life that there's two days, two, the two most important days in a person's life are the day that they were born and the day that they understand why. This is so true because once you have your purpose, you have a reason for being here. You have an identity, you have a goal, you have an objective, you have a passion. And life without passion is not life. It's merely 
existence. And if you want it, if you make me be a better man when I saw you, when I love you, that is something that generates passion. That's why people get married, divorced, married, divorced, relationship after relationship, because they're looking for the ultimate passion between two people. There's nothing wrong with that. Also, you want to have that special passion for your purpose, why you were put on this planet. Passion is a key positive. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix Legions and loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Does that sound like somebody that knows what his identity is, that knows what his purpose is, that know that he's not even holding himself to achieving his purpose in this lifetime, but is willing to go to the next lifetime? It's very much like the line from the movie Bonnie and Clyde, when a reporter asked Bonnie, you know, what do you do? And she says, we rob banks. They have an identity. Get yourself an identity. When you have an identity, you have a purpose, you have a goal, you have passion. That is living. It gives your life more juice. That's what you're looking for. You know, don't you see so many people that just go through life on a treadmill where they're just walking and going, you know, but they don't have any passion. They don't have any juice. That's what makes life fun. That's what makes life interesting. That's what makes life fulfilling. Get your identity. Have some passion. Be juiced. When you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. That's from the movie When Harry Met Sally. Once you find that passion, once you find that excitement and you get started with it, time loses all meaning. You're focused and you are just driven. And that is an unbelievably great feeling to have. Isn't it, Eli? You know, after you, you, you hit a shot at the, win, the winning basketball, you get the winning hit in a baseball game, it's like, you want to keep playing? I want to keep doing this. I love this. That's the way your business life should be as well. You spend more time in business if you're a typical person. You know, you spend seven, you spend eight hours typically minimum at your business. You spend time sleeping. You, you spend time, you know, with um, free time. But there's also travel time. But you're spending that eight hours at work. Minimum. So if you're going to dedicate, that's going to be the most the largest chunk of time that you dedicate each day, make it something that you're passionate about. Don't make it something where you're just killing time. Make sure you're productive out there and most importantly in here as well. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! That of course is Mel Gibson from the movie Braveheart and you know when you go to work and you're in certain services, you're in school, there are certain rules and you have to abide by the rules when you're on the road. You certainly don't want to disobey the rules because it can be dangerous. But remember, people can never take away your creative thoughts. Allow your creative thoughts to run wild and don't critique them all the time. Let them go. Let them run wild. Because a lot of times, they will take you to a place where you say, if I put this together, and I put that together, then I'm going to have something great. But the two things are, are, are so obtuse, but once you put them together, then they make sense. That's how great ideas are born. So remember, you can be shackled, you can be in jail, you can be in a concentration camp, but they can't take your freedom, the freedom of your mind. And because we will never end a meeting on a philosophical note, let's all get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad.